So, hello and welcome to Wastelands Raceway. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I've made this mesh wire fence as some scenery or whatever um, for your gas lands. So, there you go. That's that's the finished article or a version of the finished article. Um, it's quite simple. The materials I'm using is uh, is this stuff here. It's like a a mesh net fabric that's used in dressmaking it's called tool or tweel or something like that um, it comes on a roll um, we've got loads of it because my wife was trying to make a bridesmaid's dress once but it didn't work out so we've got loads left but anyway so that's the the main mesh of the fence um, I've cut two lollipop sticks and I've fastened them together in a 45 degree angle because it's gonna be the base it's gonna be a corner fence that I'm doing so because of that, I've marked out a position of uh, five fence posts, which I've cut from a, a lollipop stick. And I've got a couple of brace pieces that I've cut with 45 degree angle on the end to support the corner. Um, so that's it in terms of materials. I will be using super glue. I'll probably be using a hot glue gun, but that's the materials. Let's get started. So there we go. The first thing I've done is I mixed up a very thin um, wash with a dark brown acrylic paint um, and water very very thin all I want to do is stain the fence posts so I don't want it to be a paint I just want enough to sort of soak in accentuate the grain just make it a bit darker than the lolly stick looks it's as simple as that really just gonna wash my so as you can see, not the most technical of tasks when it comes to making models. But. So let those dry um, and then I'll come back to using those, but there's plenty we can do whilst they're drying. So I mixed up another batch of this acrylic brown paint wash, not quite as thin as the last time. I'm literally just going to paint it over the base just to make it a bit browner, a little less stark, just in case stuff shows through the basing material. So there you go, that's that done as well. I'll leave all that lot to dry. Okay, so let's get on with the fence. Um, I've cut the tuile to be the same height as the fence post, he says. Let's just check that. Mm, okay. Right, so let's get started on this fence. Um, I've cut the um, material to be just about the same length as the fence, uh, as the posts, maybe very, very slightly shorter, um, but that's that's okay, that's good. Um, and now let's get on with, uh, with this. This is gonna be quite a messy process, which is obviously fun. I'm gonna paint it silver to start with or sort of gunmetal silver using using army paint turbo yeah it could be any any silver you want now I guess you could you could use an airbrush you could use a spray can yeah an airbrush will work beautifully I'm sure right? it works beautifully if you've got one right I've seen this has started fraying at the edge now for me I don't mind that because it's you know, this is going to be a derelict old, horrible, ratty old fence. Um, but if that's not what you want, you might want to be a bit more, a bit more careful than I'm being. At the edges, just treat it with, with kid gloves. Um, now, I'm hoping that the whole thing's going to turn out silver, but it doesn't really matter if it's not entirely silver because A, the mesh itself is black, so any shows through, it's only going to be sort of like a dark mesh, which is fine. Um, and B, I'm going to be rusting it as well, so it's going to be patchy and rusty and horrible and grungy and disgusting. I need to just be mindful that before the paint dries, you don't want any of these sort of bubbles drying in place. That's fairly easy to get rid of. Here we now have whether the camera will pick that up or not, that's actually now silver-ish, which is, you know, it's a good start. Okay, so I'm gonna start rusting it up now. I'm gonna be using a 
once again these rust textures from um, green stuff world but anyway bit of sponge and just sponge it all over um, be as generous as you want um, probably the more generous the better yeah that's 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 coming on it's coming on what I'm gonna do is just add make sure that the the top edge has got plenty on there yeah that, for me that's looking quite good um, obviously you won't be able to see on the camera at the moment I will put it against a dark background when I'm finished because you'll get a better view of, of what the actual rusty coloration looks like there you go let's do some more I'm not worrying about a different piece of, of sponge making sure I've got plenty of rust along the top and bottom edges looking good so far I'll just come in now with the light rust um, just to give it the full, full spectrum of rusty loveliness now the beauty of doing it with the same sponge and on top of the same sort of paper I've been using before is um, the colours do mix together a little bit from the sponge or from the paper below so you do get a nice mix of rust type colours so yeah that's gonna that's gonna look good when it's dry so I will leave that to dry now um, and while that's drying I'll come back to work on the base so here we've got the uh, fence posts and the base piece um, all dry also got a glue gun it's the first time I've used a hot glue gun in my projects but let's get a bead of that on there see how that's gonna work and get the first fence post in place yeah that's that's held already that's pretty good so let's get the other Get the other fence posts done. This hot glue stuff's quite good, isn't it? I like it. Here we are. It's not looking too bad, is it? It's all right. It's, that one's a bit wobbly. Oh, okay, let's get a bit more glue on there and see if I can fix that. But apart from that, yeah, that's looking all right. That's looking all right, isn't it? I'm, I'm happy with that. The fence posts are a little bit rickety, but again, for me, I'm not bothered. Right, so that then moves us on to these two corner pieces, which I'm going to stick in place on each side of this corner post. Um, just because I want it, really. Um, so I'm going to use super glue for that. One end, a bit on the other end. And <laughs> stuck to my hands and the dog's going mad so let's try again let's just get the ends super glued let's see if I can stick them in so yeah that works let's try the other one stuck it to my finger <laughs> and I've destroyed the place okay not to worry it's all repairable okay so let's um Yeah, okay, so perhaps this hot glue stuff isn't quite as easy to use as I first thought, but you know, it's worth a go, wasn't it? Let's, um, let's come in with some super glue. In fact, our friend Armstrong on Mad Eye Miniatures would approve of using super glue to fix this, because he's quite a fan of the super glue. Um, in fact, he's a big fan of the um, 
the baking soda super glue technique which I don't know if you've heard of it but basically if you add baking soda to super glue it dries extra hard and extra fast it's like an activator strengthener um, so if you want to see how that stuff works go out and check out go check them out see what you can do with with super glue and baking soda anyway right so we've got the fence poster in um, a little bit haphazard but I, I'm happy with that I'm okay with that so I'm um, gonna wait for the super glue to dry um, and then come back texture the base um, before the wire goes on because it's easier doing it that way round so here we've got the base finished, the glue's dry, it's nice and sturdy, sturdy-ish. Um, so I'm going to texture the base and what I'm going to do is use this, um, this rust texture again. Because um, it does have um, a nice fine texture to it. It's as good as a texture paint, if not better to be honest with you. And it's from a company that isn't a huge international conglomerate corporation, so I'm happy to give them a give them a little plug so green stuff world uh, rust textures I am not sponsored by them they probably don't even know that I'm doing this video um, but yeah it's good stuff it's good stuff and it works I like it so I'm literally just smashing it on there in a big, nice thick layer um, trying to avoid too much in the way of brush marks. That is the base done in terms of texture. Um, so again, we'll let that dry. We'll come back. I'll give it a dry brush over. There you go. Um, I dry brush the base. Uh, it's a very quick, very dirty dry brush. Um, I might come back and redo it. But for the moment, that'll do. It's the base is done. It's ready to go. Um, so it's literally now just a case of sticking this stuff onto the fence post, um, which I'm going to use super glue for. And let's just get that stuck on there. It's pretty good. It does adhere well. Um, I know some some materials are a right pain to get super glue to stick but this stuff seems to work okay he says <laughs> there you go that's stuck on there let's go to the next and you can spend as long as you like making it as perfect as you want But for those of you who have seen my builds before, you know, perfection probably isn't something that um, I'm particularly known for. Good enough is good enough. As you can see, it is going on really easily, it's sticking really easily, it's actually not a difficult job to do. Okay, now, all I'm going to do with these is just sort of cut kind of a raggedy end to it. Maybe a bit of damage to the fence in places, just because, why not? So that's pretty much done. I'm just gonna add a couple of bits and pieces just to bring it out of itself. Um, so there you go, look, there you have it. There's my um my rickety rackety old fence. So here you have it, the finished article. Um, thank you for watching. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do consider subscribing if you haven't. Um, 
for a small channel like us, one or two subscriptions here and there does make a huge difference. Um, anyway, so that's it for today. Bye for now and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Take care.